What's up guys, I'm Justin Ball and welcome back to The Recording Percussionist, where I show you everything you need to know to get from that beginning stage of looking at a microphone or camera for the very first time, to that intermediate stage where you feel confident in your ability to set up, record, and edit an entire recording session all on your own. Today, it's finally time to talk about mono versus stereo and stereo miking techniques. This is a huge topic. Just kidding. It's actually one of the easiest things to understand about audio recording. So this should be a nice breather from a lot of the spec talk we've been doing recently. Let's start with mono. Mono means one channel. If I'm recording with one microphone, I'm recording in mono. Everything will be heard as balanced or centered through my headphones or speakers because both sides are outputting the exact same information from the exact same sound source. I record the sound of my voice in mono when I make these videos. If I'm recording in stereo, I'm using two or more mics. However, using two mics is not what makes it stereo. What makes it stereo is the panning of the sound to the left and right channels, and the mix down of those two audio files into one file that retains that separation of the two channels. This can either be done as I'm recording or in post, which I talk about more in depth in the audio editing series. Listen to the stereo file with headphones on. Now, listen to the same thing, but in mono. Hear the difference? If not, either your headphones or, I guess, your ears are broken, which would suck. Don't break your ears, bro. One of the reasons we record in stereo is to make our audio sound more realistic. When you're standing in front of a keyboard instrument, you hear low notes on the right side and high notes on the left side. So when listening to a recording, it sounds more realistic if that same stereo imagery is there. Stereo image refers to the exact amount of panning in the recording. You can have a hard pan in which you pan the sound of the microphones all the way to one side, or you can be more subtle, panning just enough to create some separation. You can also pan multiple instruments to exact locations, so that as you're listening through headphones or maybe a good set of speakers, you can just about pinpoint the exact location of the sound based on the recording. Another reason we record in stereo is to capture a realistic image of the room that's being recorded in. With mono recordings, it's much more difficult to gauge any sort of spatial relationship between the instrument and the surrounding environment. So, the stereo imagery affects the sound of the instrument, yes, but it's also capturing the reflections we need to determine how far away the instrument is, where it is in the room, and all of the other characteristics of the recording space. Making sure that you're recording in stereo when using two or more mics is arguably the number one rule in recording. And even the best of us make the mistake of recording in mono from time to time. Stereo imagery is exactly the reason I chose not to talk about using devices such as phones or zoom recorders in this series, because first off, they're simply inferior to real microphones and modern recording techniques, and second, they aren't capable of true stereo recording. Sure, this zoom recorder has two mics on it, so yes, technically it can record two separate channels, and yes, they're also pointed in opposite directions in hope of creating some more separation. However, it's the distance between the two that makes something like a handheld recorder or a phone unrealistic. Speaking of space between microphones, let's move on to stereo miking techniques with actual microphones. With solo percussion and percussion ensemble recordings, the two most common stereo miking techniques are spaced pair and XY, with endless variations on both. 
Spaced pair, also known as AB, typically involves a matched pair of condenser microphones mounted on a boom stand at the same height and ranging anywhere from 2 to 10 feet apart. By placing the microphones further apart on separate stands, you can achieve a much wider stereo image. One thing you need to be careful of when using the space pair technique is the distance from the sound source. If one mic is closer to the instrument than the other, depending on the amount of space between them, you may experience a timing difference between the two, which is a result of sound hitting the mics at different times. If they're too far apart, when you mix down the two audio files into one, you're likely to experience something called destructive interference, which results in decreased amplitude. This will also be something you'll need to adjust when recording larger percussion ensemble pieces, in which you're using both spot mics somewhere within the ensemble and maybe a pair of omnis up front. It's not too big of an adjustment to make, and it is a pretty easy fix, but if you're not aware that it's happening, it can diminish the quality of your recordings. For this reason, I like to stick with shorter spaces between them, usually about two feet apart. And if I want a wider stereo image, I'll simply point the mics outward until I hear it the way I want to. XY, sometimes called coincident pair, typically involves a matched pair of directional microphones, such as a cardioid, in an X shape, with one slightly above the other. This results in a more stable directional focus, but will also capture the sound of the room less efficiently. In general, directional microphones will lose some of the lower frequencies and some of that richness and color that the AV setup provides. You can experiment with lots of variations with XY by simply turning the mics more inward or outward, slightly further apart, and so on. You may have also heard of another technique called ORTF, which is essentially a slightly wider version of XY. For either of these techniques, if you're recording a keyboard or other pitched instrument in which you're working with a horizontal range of sounds, find the highest and lowest pitches that you're playing and place the mics directly in between those two points. This way, the stereo imagery will be balanced on both sides. If you simply set the mics up in relation to the instrument, you may end up with an unbalanced stereo image depending on the range of the instrument that's actually being played on during the recording. So which one should you be using? Well, I personally prefer AB because of the wideness of the stereo image and the amount of manipulation it provides in post. There are of course other stereo miking techniques you can try out. These two are just the most common and a great starting point for any of you looking to get your feet wet. I would recommend trying both so that you can decide which one you like best. Depending on the instrument, the room, and the mics, you're going to have completely different results than I am. And again, there's no better judge than your own ears. Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and if you feel inspired to start getting better recordings, consider subscribing, and look out for the next video where we start to plan the recording session and discuss full takes versus chunks. Until then, happy recording.